Okay. Now. Welcome to Book of Acts Now Global School. We're excited that you're here with us today. We're looking at the building blocks of God's Word. We've been studying and going through the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And there are word pictures that go with each letter. Uh, they communicate more to us than what we would ordinarily uh, get if we were just looking at the English alphabet. It gives a much deeper meaning. And so as we're looking at various Hebrew words, we can see what was God's original intent for those words and how they were used. So we go much deeper into the Word of God. So today we're looking at uh, the letter Tet. Um, and you'll see here on the board on the top, the letter Tet is this symbol, or this symbol, and uh, it means surround or snake or twist. And so... This is how you spell Tet, and I think that's quite interesting okay. because it reveals something about all the Hebrew letters. Uh, how you spell Tet is the letter Tet, the Yod, and the Tav. And of course, Tav means covenant, and uh, Yod means the work of his hand. And so the, uh, these letters making up the word Tet actually mean to surround, to surround you with the work of the covenant. Well, what a world. What in the world would a symbol of a snake, which is the word picture, uh, have to do with being surrounded by the covenant? Well, remember now what it says in John uh, 3.14, that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. And so he bore our sin. He became the sin bearer, which is how uh, the serpent was used by Moses and how it's being represented here in John 3.14. So he became our sin bearer on the cross. Amen. And so that's why Ted actually means, come on now, to be surrounded with the work of the covenant because the cross is the work of the covenant. Come on now, somebody Amen. gets a revelation. Amen. It's awesome. You see the cross represented in the Old Testament in the Hebrew language. See, that's, this is why Paul and others were able to preach the cross just using the Old Testament. They didn't have a New Testament, but they found the cross in the Old Testament. Amen. And we can too. Alright, so let's take a look at the first word that's on our board. It's the word for womb. And this is pregnant with meaning. So let's take a look at the letters that make up the word womb in Hebrew. So this letter here is what? Remember in Hebrew we read right to left. And so this first uh, letter is it's bet, which means house. And you notice it has a dot here. We call that a dog edge. When it has a dot, it makes the B boy sound. For boy, B. When the dot is not there, it makes the V or victory sound. So bet has the potential for two different sounds. One is B uh, as a boy, the other is B as a victory. Uh, if it has the dot, it makes the B sound. Okay, then we have the tet. And then this letter at the end is what? It's, it's the suffet ending. And so normally, uh, if, this is, if this letter is not at the end, it would have another, another piece that came out down here. This is the new. And so what happens at the end, if it's used at the end of, uh, of the word, then that drops down and, and makes a longer leg to it. All right, so we put the three word pictures together here. The house uh, to surround and life, and the womb actually means the house that surrounds life. God designed the womb in a woman as a house to surround the life, and what, where did the life come from? God put that life in the womb, and the moment the conception happened, that's a human being, that's a life. Amen. And if you abort that, you're committing murder. Amen. Let's, let, let's not be confused by political correctness. Amen. Let's go with what the Word of God says Amen. and when life starts. Amen. Now, there's a couple of new developments that I'm excited to hear about. There are some states now in America that are taking a stand regarding abortion. Um, and that is Ohio, Kentucky, now I'm blanking on the, on the Mississippi. Road, and Mississippi. And, they're, and all three states of what's called the heart bill. And the idea is, if life ends when the heart stops beating, it must be the reverse is true. 
life begins when there is a heartbeat. Amen. And so yeah. on that basis, three states in America have passed a law, we'll probably get challenged, but they passed a law saying it's illegal to do abortion after six weeks when that heartbeat starts. Now we believe, of course, that conception is yes. the moment that God starts life within Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, a woman Amen. and there's an embryo. And that's when life begins. But if they can do if they can succeed with that, with the test that will probably go to the Supreme Court, it's going to turn back the clock on full term abortions and partial birth abortions. And we need to pray, folks, that that will happen. Because there's they're even now wanting to kill babies as they're coming out the womb or even out of the womb and say it's okay because it's the mother's right. Wait a minute. Our Constitution says that every human being has the right to what? Life, liberty, and happiness, including the most helpless among us, which is the unborn child. Amen. Now, I'm sorry if that doesn't fit your political correctness, but that's the truth. And Amen. somebody needs to stand up and start defending the babies. Come on. Amen. Amen. Always work. Amen. I bet I'll start Always preaching. Work. Amen. All right, so trust or safe. Um, let's take a look at the letters that make that up. Again, we have the bat here, uh, which means house. And uh, again, we have the surround. And this time we have the cat, C-A-T-T. And what does cat mean? Fence and surround, or it's uh, an inner chamber or the secret place. So the way I chose to translate this is pronounced betak. Is uh, surrounded by the secret place will cause you to feel trust. That's what it means in Psalms 91 when it says, "Hide me in the secret place of the Most High and under the shelter of the Almighty." What that really means in Hebrew is that's the unreachable place where the enemy cannot touch you when you're in a secret place in the most time. Then you'll know what trust means and safety means. Whew. And guess what? When Yeshua, when Christ Yeshua says, go into your closet and close the door for the Father is waiting in the secret place for you. He was applying Psalms 91. That's... Yeah, that's a Hebrew concept. Amen. To go into your closet and close the door because the Father's waiting. And when you do that, you're entering the secret place of the Most High. And under His shadows and His wings thou shalt trust. Amen. We need to learn how to do that. Uh, the word seduce is interesting. Um, it, remember now, this word tet can mean surround, snake, or twist. The twisting, and this word here, ayin, means I, and he means to declare. And so the twisting of the I is revealed when you are seduced. James says, when you are led away by what you're looking at because of lust, it produces sin. And the sin reveals that your eye got twisted. I mean, that's what it says in Hebrew. And so we need to be careful that the enemy does not twist our eyes in what we see. Another way to put that in our language and concept would be, be careful little eyes what you see. Amen. Be careful little ears what you hear. For someone is watching over you. We, in other words, we need to guard what we see. Because if you will allow your eyes to be filled with lust and filled with violence and filled with the things of the world, eventually what your eyes see will take your mind there and eventually your heart. I'm just telling the truth. This is what the Bible's teaching. You don't get seduced if you're careful with what you do with your eyes. All right, so uh, this uh, good, the concept of good is seen in the Hebrew language. And so we're here to surround and this is nail, and this is house. Put those three concepts together, by the way, tov. Um, in Israel, they say, when they say good morning, you know, it's, it's, uh, they use tov. Okay, so um, the nail that surrounds the house will bring goodness to you. Again, here's the gospel in picture form in the Hebrew language. If your house is surrounded by the nail that crucified the Savior, 
goodness will follow you. Amen. What, remember the 23rd Psalms? How it, how it ends? Up, you know, it, it says that um, even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff will comfort me. And goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. Listen, the reason that goodness can follow you all the days of your life it's because he paid a sacrifice with the nail that crucified him on a cross. And when the Savior who was crucified walks with you, his righteousness and his goodness will attend you and be in you and go before you and cause you to walk in his way. And goodness will be seen in your life. Not because you're good, but because he's good and his righteousness goes Amen. in you and before you and declares goodness all around you and you find yourself walking in righteousness. No wonder it says, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, what does that, sec, that text say? 2 Corinthians, we ought to know that text. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Yeshua. Because He is imparting to us His goodness. Amen? Amen. That's what it means to have the shepherd walking with you. You won't want to do what's wrong if the Spirit of the living God is living in you and Christ is imparting His goodness in you. You won't want to do evil. You don't refrain from doing evil because there's something that forbids you from doing it. God changes the heart so you don't want evil. You want goodness because the one who is goodness lives in you. Amen? That's called, there's a technical term. It's called righteousness by faith. Amen? All right, theological concept. All right, clean and pure. What does it mean to be clean and pure? I didn't give the answer to this. The whore. So we have the tet. We have the hay in the middle of the word means what? If the hay is in the middle of the word, it means God's heart. It means to reveal, but it means God's heart. And then race here at the end, what does race mean? The highest person. So put those three concepts together. Come on now. To be clean and pure is when you are surrounded with the heart of the highest person. If the heart of the Father is surrounding you and you're abiding in His love, that's what it means to be surrounded by the heart of God. You are surrounded by His love then you're going to know what cleanness and pureness is. Amen. And it's not because you got up in the mirror and you looked in the mirror this morning and said, my you holy thing, look how good you are. Come on, that's self-righteousness. We need to forget self-righteousness. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. The only righteousness that you and I can boast in is the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Christ Yeshua. It's Him living in me and me abiding in Him that produces purity and holiness and cleanness. That's what these letters say. And so when Paul talks about righteousness by faith, where does he get that? It's a Hebrew concept. It's not a Greek concept. Amen. Not a Gentile concept. It's a Hebrew concept. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want purity. I want holiness. Yeah. And the way I'm going to get there is to have the love of God in His heart abiding in me and dwelling in me because love does no wrong to a neighbor. Yeah. That's it. I'm teaching the truth. Amen. Amen. Whew. Now, the reverse of purity and being clean would be uncleanness or defilement. And so let's take a look at the Hebrew letters that make up to be defiled or unclean. So we have surround, the tet, we have mem, chaos, and then we have the aleph, uh, the word picture here is os, which means strong, can also mean the father, uh, because it's the first, but in this case it means strong. And so to be surrounded by strong chaos will cause you to be unclean and defiled. Amen. Now we've got to talk about that. Because this is a problem. 
You know, like we hear the idea in churches today, we want revival. We want to, we want to see God move in our midst and the power of God and the fire of God. But at home, we hold hands with the devil. Amen. My God. Hear me. When we're watching soap operas and we're watching violence on television for our entertainment, we're holding hands with the devil. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take a step further. Chaos. You know that 95% of the news is about chaos. Now, I update myself on the news. I don't, I don't keep my television on so I have CNN or one of the networks blaring through my house because that produces chaos. I can go on uh, Yahoo or whatever internet I'm using and I can get a quick thumbnail sketch of what's going on in the world because we need to know how to pray. But I don't inundate my house with negativity and chaos Amen. because that will rob peace from your dwelling and your house. It, you know, folks, we need to be conscious of that. If we want to have peace in our homes, shalom in our homes. Now, my wife and I, you all know that we have foster children. How many know that when you get foster children, they come with baggage? Right. <laughs> yeah, we've seen a lot of it. You know, they they have uh, outbursts of anger and fits and, and, you know, rebellion and all kinds of things going on. Because they're coming, they're bringing with them the environment that they were in. And that has to be changed when they come into my house. And so we found some techniques that not only help us in our house, it might help you in your house. So I'm going to share with you about how to overcome chaos in your house briefly, okay? All right. We like to put on worship music. Turn off CNN. Turn on praise music. Amen. Switch from chaos and negativity to the praise and glory of God. Amen. Come on now. This sounds simple, but it's difficult to do because we get addicted to things that's kind of human nature. The truth is we don't have a television in my house because we decided to keep it off. Amen. Now, if we want to watch a Christian movie, we can access it through the Internet um, on my computer. And we occasionally will show a good Christian movie to our boys. We have boys as foster children. We have a little projector, shines it on the wall, that's bigger than the TV. And uh, and so we need to take we need to take authority over the environments in our houses. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. The revival in the church isn't going to come. Hear me, because I'm telling you a truth, America. Revival in the church is not going to come until there's a revival in the households of America and the families of America. Because you can't expect to hold hands with the devil in your house and come to church and participate in a revival. Amen. Amen. Come on. And it's, it's time that the church gets this. You know, over 50% of the homes today have Harry Potter. And that's about the occult. Even schools are assigning Harry Potter to go home and read about witches and warlocks and the demonic power of the occult. Amen. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but do you know that there's a great turning to witchcraft today and to the occult and to paganism? The millennial generation, I read about this on the internet, the millennials today, which be the current young generation, in groves they are turning to, to, um, to become pagans. It's a fad now. Or to become witches or, or wicca. There are more there are more millennials today that are participating in witchcraft than there are Presbyterians in America. Did you know that? That's a sad day. Amen. Because they're saying, well, there's no power in the church and not much relevant there. Let's go where the real power is and they're deceived into thinking that's the real power. And why is the power missing in the church? Because we walk in chaos. And when we do that, there's a lack of power in the presence of God in our midst in the church. Because we bring with us either chaos 
or we bring the presence of God with us when we come to church. And if we could just get that concept, we would begin to see Christians who would say, you know what, I'm going to keep worship music playing in my house 24 hours a day. I'm going to have a dedicated place of prayer. And I'm going to see the glory and presence and power of God where I live. And when it's where I live, I will be in my church. And so you be a committee of one. You be a committee of one to say, I'm going to be responsible for the lack of power in my church. I'm going to live it in my home. And I'm going to bring the glory of God with me when I come to church. Amen. Amen. I'm telling the truth. Amen. If we're going to have a hope for revival in America, it's got to start with you and me. In our home where we live. So we won't be surrounded by strong chaos. We'll be surrounded by the nail. We'll be crucified with Christ. Now another thing we do in my home, besides having, we have a dedicated prayer room, we have praise music going on in our house 24 hours a day, because the children that we have will act out and fight and have aggravation, it taints the atmosphere in our home. There's this tension and aggravation. They produce it great because the enemy's still working in their lives. And we're getting them to confess Christ. We pray with them, but it's a battle. Anybody out there got some battle with some kids? I mean, you know, we raise our own kids and they have this kind of stuff going on. Right. Part of it is because of what they bring home from school or what they watch. Just tell the truth. So sometimes Marty will just put on uh, music that kids can relate to. So they see pictures of kids, and you can find it on YouTube in various places. They're worshiping God. Some of them are dancing and shouting. They see kids their own age on there worshiping God. And the kids start, our kids will start dancing and interacting and praising God. Because it's being demonstrated. Then when we have serious, serious warfare going on, I'm going to reveal to you a secret weapon that we use. John Eckhart has written a book called Prayers That Rout Demons. And he's reading biblical prayers, applying scripture, putting them into biblical prayers to cast out the enemy and get rid of him. When we have serious warfare going on in our house, Margie, will, she's downloaded that book on the internet for free. And she just turns it on. And here's this big booming voice coming out, reading prayers that rout demons. The demons go, ah! And they go into hiding and the atmosphere goes, ah! And Shalom comes in. I've given you a secret weapon, y'all. If this will work on my foster kids, it'll work on anybody, believe me. We need to take our homes back. And the atmosphere in our homes. And participate in revival where we live. And then we need to bring it to church because God wants to revive the church and use the church to illuminate the earth and the world with His glory. Amen. And then we'll begin to see people getting healed and set free from the devil. Amen. And saved. Yeah. Amen. So we've got to wrap this up real quick. Um, we've got a handout for you today on uh, the Hebrew month that we're just entering. Dennis, Two weeks. pass this around, please. I got all excited and started preaching, so I'm going to be brief on this. Mike, you got to start right now. Pretty quick. Two minutes. Okay, so this is a leap year in the Hebrew calendar. We're in the month of Adair. And uh, the, the idea of a leap year means, in uh, you know, when we have one in, in America, we have like one extra day in February, right? They have like an extra month. And so the month of Adair gets repeated twice. That wouldn't be enough. And because it gets repeated twice, it's considered to be a pregnant month. A pregnant month. And it's pregnant with victory over your enemies, deliverance and provision. So I encourage you to look that up. You can Google it. The month of Adair. And so I've given you something to read and take home with you. Amen. You're going to have some month to overcome worry, to develop strategy and warfare, to uh, make decrees against you be broken. Uh, because this is also the month of Esther, when she overcame the decrees of the enemy against the Jewish people and prayed and saw a great breakthrough. And so this month coming up in March is pregnant with victory, and God wants us to participate in the season of time. Amen. Father,